today I'm going to present uh, about how we're running steel in Truffle Okarata production. It's not specific about Truffle Okarata product that you see every day when you open our website, but it's more like our implementation uh, in the data team. So currently in Truffle Oka, is especially in data team, we're already running Kubernetes load uh, for about almost two years, and then we just uh, tried <coughs> steel since six months ago. And then I will show you how you run it, how we maintain it, and how the result that we got. Okay, uh, I think for the full of this presentation, I'm not going to speak totally in English because I will I'll try to switch because maybe some people uh, will be able to understand more about what I'm going to say. In terms of myself, my name is Imbre, uh, Imbre Nagi, you can call me Imbre. I'm right now a software engineering in Travel Cadiga. So this is my cartoon that took, that was took about two, uh, two years ago. And then uh, I'm also the community leader, and I'm also one of the Jakarta Kubernetes organizer. So the agenda today, we are going to talk about four things: Kubernetes in Traveloka, Istio, and how we run Istio in uh, Traveloka, and lesson learned that we got for the last six months. Okay, so kita mulai gimana Kubernetes di Traveloka. Jadi, uh, long story short, uh, as I said. Uh, we have run a lot for two years in Kubernetes, not Istio. Uh, and then multiple teams in Traveloka Data already use it. And uh, they run different type of loads, uh, something like API and then visualization dashboard, GPU and machine learning and so on. Uh, and right now, at least we have uh, thousands of requests per seconds. I cannot say more detail, but we have huge load that uh, run in Traveloka Data. And then, after we use uh, Kubernetes for the last two years, what we got is we have something like up to 60% cost optimization by uh, tuning up the auto scaling and by tuning up the CPU utilization. So we got about 60% cost cut. It's pretty nice. And then uh, as you can see here, this is how we uh, split the load for every team. So in here, uh, every team in Traveloka Data will have their own namespace. So team A will have namespace A, team B will have namespace B and so on. And for each team, they will have their Kubernetes ingress. And then <coughs> this is what we have right now is staging in production. So in our staging and production, we have same config, so that if uh, something bad happened in production, we can uh, debug it easily in staging and then run, run the production deployment to fix it. And everything is just working fine until at least one team tries to uh, separate their load into smaller service that we call microservices. Why? Uh, you can see here, we have right now dependency between services. So this service A tries to talk to service B, and service A talks to another services, and the communication between them are using gRPC. And also, right now we have in our Kubernetes in several hosts like team A, uh, the traveloka.com, team A, API, traveloka.com, and so on. And this ingress is connected to our something like GraphQL. And then we also have some uh, machine learning model that runs in Kubernetes. And actually managing all of this is freaking complicated. So why? Because when we have a service, we need to secure the inner surface communication. <coughs> Usually what we did before is we have something like API key to secure the communication between the services. But when we have so many services, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't scale. And I'll tell you uh, later how Istio solve this issue. And then we also have unstandardized monitoring approach because every service in here has their own service admin uh, from our team. And then they, if they are working with different language, they tend to come up with different type of monitoring style. Someone is using Datadog, someone is using Prometheus, and so on. And then it doesn't uh, it doesn't has any standard. And then. We think that we need to better way to monitor our API in terms of the latency and then the error rate, the duration and so on. And then the last thing that becomes a big problem for us is because our services are gRPC. A gRPC load balancing doesn't work out of the box in Kubernetes because you, if, when you're running gRPC, you have to do something like client-side load balancing, right? And when you have Kubernetes service, it doesn't work just like a HTTP load balancing as well. So, how is Dio solve this issue? So basically, Dio will simplify all of this uh, problem. They will help us. It will help us in managing the services, service mess. And why is Dio? The three good things that we take from Dio is our traffic management, security, and monitoring. 
Uh, we already see this picture from my representation. So basically, this is a control plane, and this is the surface that we have. And these surfaces uh, have their on site card proxy, which is Envoy proxy. And then this Envoy proxy will try to communicate basically with the control plane. And a pilot will do several stuff like putting the traffic. And then Mister will try to collect all the metrics and set some uh, traffic policy. And the Citadel in here will try to generate the uh, TLS certificate for inter-service communication. I'm going to start with the traffic management. So uh, basically, in Istio traffic management, what we can do is uh, we can do A-B test because uh, as you can see here, when we have traffic away, uh, when you set traffic <coughs> service A to have 50% traffic, service B with, with uh, 50% traffic, you can do something like a heat test. But if you don't want to exactly split the traffic equally, what you can do is you can run something like Canary. You can set one surface to have 1% and another surface to have 99%. And other, other good stuff that's been explained, we can set time up, retries, and circuit breakers, and so on, without changing the code. And that's the good thing. So all of our developers doesn't need to make their own monitoring implementation, something like uh, fail, failure handling and in their code, so they don't need it anymore. And then this is how uh, it's used with the traffic. So if you have this surface A with surface B, surface A basically is trying to communicate with surface B. And if you want to split the traffic, let's say surface A want to call a SCAR version of surface B, and the 5% we call the kinetic version. You can do it easily in this deal as shown by method before. And if you want to tra split the traffic based in its content, you can do the same. You can say that uh, if the re HTTP request has something like uh, HTTP, HTTP header with Android, the request will go to specific service. And then if it has iPhone in the HTTP request header, it will go to kernel. I'm not going to, talk, uh, to take so much time in this slide. And this is the SDM mixer. Uh, basically, the SDM mixer is used to collect all of the metrics. And then uh, it collects all of the telemetry data like the mo for monitoring purposes. And then it also has some, something like uh, uh, access control and research policy that can uh, help s uh, securing the surface. And this is the interesting part. So if you can see here, uh, we have Citadel in here. Citadel is the part of Istio which will generate the TLS certificate. Uh, so the main task of Citadel is generating the cert certificate for inter-surface communication. So what Citadel is really doing is uh, it will communicate with the proxy and then give the proxy certificate. And then when this service A wants to communicate with service B through its proxy, it will try to check the certificate uh, generated by the Citadel. So this is how we secure our uh, <coughs> surfaces. So instead of using API key for all the surfaces, we remove it and we just change it with the TLS provided by the Istio. <coughs> so this is how we run <coughs> Istio in Travolka. So uh, app that is running in Istio right now, we have different type of surfaces. We have uh, the long NGRPC surfaces, we have some RESTful API, and then we have GraphQL server. And we have some visualization and dashboard to maintain our data, to manage our data. And as you can see here, this is the uh, service mask that we have. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to censor the name. Uh, so uh, uh, if you can see here, this is the Istio ingress gateway that we have. And then when we have traffic from here, we will go to the, the services. And then when it needs to call the other services, it will just have this uh, arrow to another services. And then uh, in here we have <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine surfaces. And then uh, the good thing is about these surface maps is uh, if you have Canary and uh, let's say a current version, when you go to this visualization, you will be able to see uh, the Canary as well on this visualization. But I'm I'm not able to show it right now because we don't have live traffic. I mean for this one. Not in Traveloka. And then this is the issue that we have uh, in monitoring the surface mass before, before we use Istio. We have unstandardized monitoring. So as I said before, its surface owner has their own approach to uh, do some monitoring stuff. And then uh, the next problem is hard to separate metrics produced by different version. Like 
if we have canary and we have the current version, we don't really see uh, monitoring for LV surfaces. By using this deal, we can solve that problem. And then also the third problem that we have also hard to see the client side metrics. So imagine that uh, we have this surface, uh, yeah, the surface, and then the client of the surface is basically the Istio Invest Gateway and the surfaces. If we want to know what is the latency from this one to this one to this one and this one to this one, it will be hard to see if you are not using Istio because maybe you're gonna need to uh, do some code in the monitoring part, I don't know. But with Istio, it will just come out of the box. You will get, you install Istio and then you install the Prometheus Grafana and you will get the monitoring. <coughs> so this is the monitoring dashboard that we have after we are using Istio. So before, uh, right now, actually we also have that doc, but because we, uh, actually this project only POC, so we try to run Istio and then we are not running all of the traffic that we right now in Istio. A small portion, uh, but because we are using Istio, and then we decided to try to use Java <coughs> 9 Prometheus and Jaeger uh, and the other monitoring tools. And by using Istio, uh, what we get from the monitoring part is basically red metrics. So, what is red? Rate, error, and duration. So, it can just come out of the box from Istio. And another reason why we, use, we are using Grafana is basically Grafana supported query by Rex. And then, it, if you find on internet several monitoring dashboard uh, for Grafana, you can just plug and play it in your cluster. So you don't really need to work on the monitoring. What you can do is just download the plugin and then install it on your Grafana. It's really easy. <coughs> this is how we did stable and canary monitoring. So currently in Travel Carita, we call the current version as stable and the new version called as canary. So if you see here, we can start from this. So uh, there is two lines. The first one is the, the green one is the canary, and the next one, the yellow one, is the stable. <coughs> so when we deploy up uh, the canary to the cluster, we can really see what is the latency of the stable one and what the latency of the SPS. And then right here, this is the number of requests. When we start uh, deploying the canary, we will be able to see what is the number of requests come from the canary, the green one. And because we try to give 10% traffic, and then what uh, and how the traffic in the stable looks like. So you can see immediately without changing anything. And then this is client side metric, as I said before. Uh, this is uh, monitoring from one surface. And then when you see this graphic, you will be able directly to see what the latency from, to, uh, from the clients. The first one is, the green one is the first client, and the next one is the red, sorry, this one. Green and yellow. These are two clients that is hitting the monitoring, no, hitting the service that we are monitoring right now. And if this is the same, this is the latency. Uh, you can see there are two monitoring lines in here. This one is from the first client, and this one is from the second client. Mm. And uh, this is the next cool thing that you get out of the box from Istio. So this is the distributed tracing. <laughs> Actually, when you're using Istio, what you get is only tracing it from one surface to another surface. But if you want to know what is the latency for a specific function within a surface, you have to do more work. Uh, what we did in here is actually, if you can see here, uh, this is two different, uh, this is two same monitoring but from different perspective. This is for from the surface perspective, <coughs> and this is from the application. So uh, in here, uh, we have function called query, and then it calls another function called payment, and so on. So we can see the breakdown from this one surface, and we can also see the breakdown from the cluster. And this is what we do. Uh, this is what we are doing currently with Istio. So each team, uh, will have their own dedicated Istio gateway. The reason is because previously when we have shared uh, in, uh, Istio gateway, when someone breaks the configuration, all the surface, the other surface that is using it, are get impacted. And we don't want that. So what we did is we created several, something like dedicated Istio gateway for every team. The benefits that we get is, uh, yeah, it's, it's decentralized. So <coughs> everything can basically maintain their own Istio gateway configuration. And then if something bad happen on their gateway, 
it will not impact the other services. The other services will keep running. And then the other benefit that we also uh, get is cost isolation. Because actually when you running the Istio gateway, you actually running another load balancer and it has cost. And if we want to isolate that cost, what we need to do is separate it into different namespace so that the cost is belong to that namespace. Okay, I'm sorry, I talked English from the beginning. <laughs> okay, so I think I think this is the most interesting part. Uh, if you see it before when uh, when Mate did the presentation, uh, the, he showed you there are so many configuration YAML manifest that you have to maintain, right? And if we want to scale the team uh, by using Istio, that way really doesn't work because all uh, all team members have to know how to use Istio, how to configure Istio, and how to uh, click write the manifest and how to maintain it. And what we did in Traveloka Data Team is actually we create a Helm chart, uh, we call it the Ops Helm chart template, which basically hide the complexity of the Istio even the complexity of the Kubernetes. So the developer doesn't really know how the Kubernetes manifest look like and how Istio manifest looks like. What they know is only this template. So uh, what we did right now is we si we splitting the Helm chart into two different parts. The first one is application Helm chart. So it's related to how we deploy the application, how we limit the resources and so on. And the second Helm chart is about the infra deployment. What we uh, mean by infra deployment is something like if you want to split the traffic into two surfaces, we're gonna set it by using another Helm jar. Or if you want to set mirroring, we're gonna do the, uh, this Helm jar. So it handles surface routing and security setting. How it looks like? So this one is application Helm jar. So as you can see here, we have the name of the application, and then we have tracks, table, and then the environment, and we have the base image, which will be uh, rewrite in by Jenkins when we run the CI/CD, and also the image tag, container port, and then we can also say what protocol that we are using, whether it's HTTP or gRPC. And then we also define the volume. Uh, if we have secret, we can also uh, define the secret name and so on. And then we also have volume mount, uh, the name, whether it's read only, read only or not, the mount tag. And we can also uh, set the container resource pack in here. So you see that we have request resources, CPU 0.5 memory, and then we have limits with CPU 1, memory 2 gigs. And we can also set the auto scale configuration. We say that we enable auto scale, max replica 10, min replica 1, and then the target CPU is about 60%. So the uh, developer doesn't really have to know about setting up the <coughs> Kubernetes manifest or, or Istio manifest. They just need to learn about it from our, uh, from our documentation and then start the application to Istio. And this is how we did the, this one, the infra helm chart. I'm gonna show you here. So, uh, this is, if we want to use the ingress, a shared ingress gateway, we just need to uh, define the Istio ingress gateway and then we define the host, what the host is. And, and then uh, basically we give in front the beginning and then specify the other things like whether it's gonna be HTTPS and what the gateway, whether we are going to share, <coughs> whether we are going to use shared ingress gateway or a uh, dedicated gateway. And then uh, if we want to protect the services, this is what I was talking about. Let's say for service A to service B, they need to communicate. And when service A wants to communicate with service B, service B uh, needs to have uh, the MTLS set up. So to setting it up is really easy in our case. We just need to say that uh, we are going to enable Istio Mutual. And then we say we specify the service policy. And then we say that the mode should be permissive or strict. So by setting this up, uh, we will get the MTLS benefit out of this. <coughs> and this is to how to split the traffic to different services. It's almost the same. So, but previously what you see uh, might be a bit different because in here we remove the subset from the services. So people just know that what the surface tag, this one is stable, and then another one is canary, and then we basically split it into stable for 95%. 
and can only for five percent. And then uh, the other configuration that we have, if uh, you want to basically, if you want to run the test and you don't want your test to run to Canary, uh, we also provide the setup. So we basically can say that if the headers is end user with the value apratama, the service will go directly to Canary. Or if they have key something like agum, if the service uh, the request will also go to Canary. So uh, the Canary condition basically override the first uh, rules that we define in here. And uh, this is another interesting uh, thing that we have. So it's also provided by Istio. So if you want to mirror the mirror the traffic, so let's say you have a uh, thousand requests per second running in production, and then you want uh, you got a problem, but it's difficult to uh, reproduce it. So what you can do is basically you can mirror the traffic from production to staging, or from uh, production to uh, another surfaces, to canary surfaces, and then you can run some testing or some monitoring or some debugging and a lot of stuff in the canary while using the real traffic production. So this is how we do it. Uh, we, we say that uh, mirror enable true, and then we also say what surface that will get the traffic from the mirroring. And uh, actually we got problem for this uh, because most of the surfaces that we have is uh, using gRPC. GRPC mirroring in Istio doesn't really work. <coughs> it still has bug, open bug in Istio. I don't know whether uh, when it will be fixed, but for now, that's the issue that we suffer from Istio. Uh, but for the HTTP, it works. And this is the CI CD that we have. We are still using Jenkins. Uh, what we do is basically, when we run deployment to production, we decide which image that we want to deploy. And then uh, in here, and then we pull the image. Basically, uh, this, pooling, uh, this image pooling is used to verify whether the image is accessed. Uh, but the image building is actually uh, created in staging deployment, staging CICD. And then after we pull the image, we create a secret, Kubernetes secret, and then we run Canary deployment in here. In this part, we can decide how much traffic that needs to go to Canary. Whether it's gonna be 5%, 10%, 25, 50, or 70. But most of the time, we're only using 10. Uh, it's a big, uh, it's a bigger than usual because usually canary traffic only uh, for one percent, but it's okay. And after that, in here we have canary to stable promo verification. It basically to verify whether this canary deployment can be deployed to production, and it will ask you whether you're gonna deploy it to production or not. If you say yes, and then the stable deployment to production faster will be executed. So this is how we deploy the application to the production, and. Uh, if you're wondering how we run the comment, actually we are deploying everything with Mac file. So uh, in every uh, project that we have, we have a Mac file for each project, and it will have something like a Mac build to build application, and then Mac keep a Mac Docker build to build the Docker image, and so on. And then uh, if you see here, I don't know whether you can really see it, but uh, the first Mac, uh, Mac file comment that we have is Mac deploy app. In this part, we are going to deploy the application first, but we are not going to deploy the Istio infra. I mean, for the surface routing, the fault detection, and so on. We only deploy the application. And then we say we are going to deploy it into a stable track. And then we also enable the auto scale by overriding the arguments. And then after it's done, and when we see it's, uh, the new pod is created in Kubernetes, uh, we will deploy the infra by running Mac deploy infra, specify the environment and, and the namespace. And then we also, uh, in here, as you can see here, uh, we set the traffic to Canary to zero because this is production deployment. So when we run uh, production to uh, deployment to production, we need to set the traffic into zero in Canary so that no, uh, no more traffic goes to Canary. And here, after that, we set the traffic weight stable to 100% to make sure that all of the rest of the traffic go to the stable deployment. And then we also set the time up. Uh, usually we use something like uh, two minutes or three minutes to basically make sure that all of the pod can be deployed around the time. If it's more than that, uh, the deployment will be failed. And we need to figure out what the problem was. And then in here, uh, after we deploy uh, the stable the canary and then we put the traffic 100% to the uh, production stable 
we still need to remove the canary pod. This is what we do. Mac delete app name space, sorry, app name, and then type canary. This is how we remove canary from the Kubernetes cluster. So in the end, when we uh, run the production traffic, we don't have any more canary uh, pod running in our cluster. This is the lesson learned. Uh, okay, FYI, we are running open source Istio on uh, GKE. So we are not running Istio uh, provided by GKE. We install everything, we maintain everything. Uh, I didn't really know the specific reason because the ops team might know the reason of this. Uh, but in our uh, POC, at least for the traffic that we have right now, we can handle up to 800% RPS request per second. It's too much uh, for this type of application, so we stop it. Actually, we can scale more. Yeah, actually, by uh, horizontally scale the pod, but we don't do that because this one is already enough. And then some issue that we found, as I mentioned before, uh, different architecture used in staging and production. Uh, and <coughs> when we had problem, uh, we found some difficulty to debug it and to fix it. So afterwards, we decided to use the same architecture for staging and production. This architecture that I'm talking about is about dedicated Istio gateway. And then gRPC mirroring doesn't work as expected, but HTTP uh, does. And then in Istio, actually, other than uh, NTLS uh, certificate used to securing the service to service communication, there is also another uh, secu security strategy that we can have. So if you have something like uh, out provide, uh, authentication provider like Out0, you can also use JWT token to uh, verify whether the request comes to the Istio service is authenticated or not. We can also do that. Uh, but unfortunately, right now in Istio, we cannot use authentication for the real human. So it's going to be complicated. So let's say that you log in by using Google, uh, creating Google email and password, and then it doesn't work in Istio. You have to do something else. What we do right now is we are using another proxy, basically to redirect traffic and to make sure the user that is access our service in Istio cluster is authenticated by another provider. So. Uh, this is just a suggestion. Always run enough load tests. Uh, why? Because we need to fail faster. We don't want to fail in production. If we fail in staging, it's really good, so we can fix it uh, sooner. <laughs> and then don't forget to tune the auto scaling config. Don't just give a big number because it will uh, spend, uh, it will waste so much money. And then if you uh, want to do more work, you need to tune the monitoring. Because we, when we run in production on the first day, we forgot to set something like uh, the sample for the tra for the tracing for the Jaeger. So all of uh, the requests <coughs> comes to our surface, we record everything, and then suddenly the monitoring service that we have down. Uh, because basically we cannot save all of monitoring. So what we can do is sampling. Let's say just take one percent of the data and then show it in the monitoring for Jaeger. I think that's all. Travel is hiring as usual. Uh, I created in Slack by using the emoji. And then, uh, any questions? Okay, one Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 masing-masing dan juga uh, memonitor servisnya masing-masing itu individually ya kayak dia mereka uh, servis tertentu mereka install Grafana sendiri atau apa karena uh, sebenarnya kayak Grafana Prometheus itu kan bisa diinstal tanpa harus ada Istio kan sebenarnya kan jadi emang sebelumnya itu semua sendiri gitu ya kalau yang di kasus di Travel Alpha itu ya jadi um, Google Grafana 
master kemudian dibagi beberapa namespace by team terus tim masing-masing itu memonitor masing-masing gitu mas ya kalau yang sebelumnya nah jadi emang positioning sih jawab dulu ya <laughs> jadi uh, sebenarnya yang dilakukan itu adalah mereka mungkin punya satu tools yang sama kayak Datadog atau Prometheus tapi matrix yang dimonitor itu beda-beda jadi misalnya ada yang cuma monitoring latency doang tapi uh, ada yang monitoringnya cuma misalnya cuma uh, apa sih jumlah request error 200, 500, 400 dan segala macam tapi ada yang nggak nge uh, monitor canary atau kayak gitu jadi ketika kita pakai Istio kita standardize semuanya kita bisa dapat Uh, red matrix tadi, red error sama duration dan kemudian kita bisa dapat yang kanari monitoring, client monitoring dan segala macam. Oke, jadi emang posisinya sebelumnya uh, sebelum ada Istio itu mereka matriknya masing-masing sesuai yang interest mereka. Terus begitu kita implement Istio on the cluster, itu memang Istio yang provide matriksnya dan jadi kita punya uh, same ini ya. Gitu. Yeah. Same baseline lah. Same baseline gitu ya. Ini istionya kan nggak per istionya tuh ya bisa di cluster komersil itu kan. Jadi mereka memperhatikan berdasarkan namespace gitu kan. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Terus kapan saya pasti lagi tuh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> ya saya lebih ke ini sih pas pengen tahu sesuai bayangan saya tuh match gak sebenarnya sama yang dilakukan ini karena kayaknya sih saya belum tahu yang istio ini. Uh, baru yang travel oh, ini saya dapat uh, banyak jelas gitu terkait uh, oke okay. uh, nanti kita bisa ngobrol-ngobrol gitu. <laughs> <laughs> oke okay. okay. selanjutnya itu sih saya cuma pengen pastiin terima kasih mas dan segala macam ya kurang lebih. Uh, iya, ya, maksudnya lebih ke komponennya. Misalnya uh, sekarang pakai info uh, <coughs> yang mana service to service sudah scatter nih infonya di mana-mana. Mau manage versioning dari infonya, saya mau fix mirroring GRP oh, tadi. Oke. Okay. Ya. Jadi uh, selama ini kita baru mulai pakai Istio itu ketika Istio itu versi 1.0.0 dan kita baru sekali update ke Istio 1.0.0. 5. Nah, jadi uh, jadi kan belum banyak pengalaman untuk update envoy dan segala macam. Tapi yang bisa diceritain adalah uh, dulu awalnya kita jadi di tim data punya satu tim DevOps yang tugasnya untuk manage uh, Kubernetes cluster as whole yang bikin uh, best practice pakai Kubernetes kayak gimana, CI/CD mesti kayak gimana. Jadi developer cuma fokus develop app sama ngikutin kayak uh, guideline yang udah di sama DevOps ya. Terus uh, ketika upgrade yang dilakukan itu adalah uh, biasanya si DevOps ini bakal komunikat eh kita butuh fitur ini dari Istio versi baru terus ada tim yang butuh ya udah kita mau upgrade nih uh, kemarin yang dilakukan itu adalah upgradenya cluster jadi nggak upgrade per service atau upgrade per namespace jadi yang dilakukan adalah kita komunikat ke semua tim yang ada di yang pakai Kubernetes cluster dan kita bilang kita pengen update ya udah kita update uh, Menariknya adalah kemarin ketemu masalah ketika update, uh, saya juga kurang paham kenapa karena itu di DevOps belakang yang ngerjain. Yang jelas ketika upgrade semua service lain aman yang nggak pakai Istio, tapi yang pakai Istio gak ada masalah. Jadi waktu itu yang dilakukan adalah rolling back ke versi sebelumnya. Dan setelah itu saya juga nggak tahu gimana caranya. Kira tim DevOps tiba-tiba udah uh, bilang dia udah ke update. Uh, Permasalahannya waktu itu kita temukan dia sempat matiin nggak tahu siapa matiin, tapi yang jelas traffic ke production waktu itu kurang lebih putus beberapa menit 
uh, kira-kira 5 menit dan habis itu di rollback kemudian kayaknya tim DevOps ngelakuin beberapa upgrade kecil-kecilan gitu akhirnya bisa Terus saya kurang tahu ke detailnya kayak gimana tapi kurang lebih kayak gitu sih itu yang... kalau mau tahu uh, lebih lanjut nanti ada orang namanya Agung Pratama <laughs> cari aja kayaknya dia nonton YouTube, uh, YouTube-nya sekarang <laughs> eh kita live stream di YouTube <laughs> ya lagi yang terakhir yang mana yang belakang aja yang tadi ditunjukin itu cuma ada uh, stable sama kanari jadi kita cuma pakai dua karena kebutuhannya sekarang cuma itu iya di port kenapa oh ada tps setahu saya bisa di set di ingress gateway istio gateway istio gateway istio gateway di istio gateway ya soalnya saya pernah lihat ada tls di sana oh, kalau tanya saya enggak terlalu bisa menjawab pertanyaan DevOps mohon maklum aja terus satu lagi logging misalkan kalau misalkan tadi logging kan e, lebih kalah metrik ya metrik dan bonsai <coughs> apakah saya pernah nanya itu logging seperti kayak asset log atau error log gitu oh, kan jadi lebih bisa antara ada patch-nya, ada patch-nya, ada patch-nya oh iya, jadi kita uh, kalau logging, kalau logging kita pakai stack driver logging Jadi uh, di masing-masing apa sih namanya? Di masing-masing. Iya, nah, benar. Jadi untuk logging khusus logging kita pakai stack driver karena uh, stack driver udah cukup dengan untuk kebutuhan kita sekarang. Jadi kita nggak pakai pakai yang lain. Uh, jadi yang kita lakukan adalah karena kita pakai Go uh, terus pakai Logras. Jadi yang kita lakukan adalah kita pakai Fluentd formatter buat ngeformat lognya di level application supaya bisa nampilnya lebih Structure di stack driver lagi, kayak gitu. Oke, okay, sip. Udah ya, bang? Udah. Iya. Oke. Okay. 